to Two Cooks in the Kitchen. Today, we are gonna make Oaxacan Black Mole. This is a really involved recipe. Every ingredient that goes into it gets some kind of processing first, um, it, but the effort is well worth it for this mole sauce. Um, we have here uh, some of Dean's uh, Chilcles Negro. Uh, we have some four um, Guajillos. These are nice and fresh. They just uh, showed up the other day. Uh, some pas four paseas, actually five paseas, and uh, four ancho negro, and two uh, chipo dried chipotles, and one dried serrano. That's actually two dried chipotles here, <laughs> one dried serrano there. Now all these peppers I've got to take the seeds and stems out of and we're going to save the seeds for this recipe and we're going to use them later. Um, so I'm going to get to work on that and we'll come back for more. got a cast iron pan smoking hot. I've taken the seeds out of the chilies and torn them into smaller pieces. So we're gonna put these in the cast iron and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna smoke these things. Let them, uh, and I'm doing this outside because uh, the capsaicins in the chilies uh, can uh, really irritate your throat. Um, I don't mind it so much, but Kelly really gets affected by it. So, um, so we're doing it on the burner outside. And we're gonna let these uh, spend some time with this heat. It'll bring out the sugars in them, bring out the flavors in them, and we're gonna, we're gonna darken them. We wanna come just short of burning them, really. Um, so, and the uh, uh, the dried serrano uh, and the chipotles, um, you don't bother taking the seeds out of those, and um, they're the only thing you can really do with them is just cut them off. They're uh, gonna be just fine that way. And I can, uh, I can smell that coming off of them. Oh, it's so good. So this this will take about ten minutes for each of these batches, and uh, this will come back when they're done. All right. So now with our dried chilies, they've all been cooked. We're gonna uh, cover them with water and let them soak for at least a half hour. And this is a, obviously cook, uh, covering them with boiling water. And with the with our green chilies, we're just going to try and get a little bit of a sear on the outside of them, so that they uh, add to the dark dark flavor of this mole. Get these guys down in the water. And this will soften these chilies and uh, also give us some chili flavored water to use when we go to put them in the blender. Mm -hmm. okay, so you can see our chilies now are looking a little bit uh, a little bit done, a little bit cooked. 
So we'll get those off of here. We'll come back and use that pan later. <coughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> and you see our, <coughs> our dried chilies are still uh, soaking <coughs> here. The water's getting nice and dark. And we'll have a good use for that water in a little while. And in the meantime, this recipe calls for an entire clove of garlic, which is a lot of garlic to peel. So um, this little trick works really well with uh, fairly dry garlic. We tried it with fresh garlic recently and it wasn't quite the same, but um, you just put it in a container and shake away. And after much shaking, the garlic is peeled. Don't you do like 300 times? Something like that. Somebody might be a counting person. Not a counting, but a counting. Mm. Something's happening. Yeah, you can see some of them are, some of them are definitely getting all the way peeled. The others, at this point, the peels come off root much easier. Okay, so at least some of these are quite peeled. Others will take a little bit of work. I'll probably, I'll shake this some more because they're not coming super done yet. But you can see that this is a little bit of a labor saving device. If you call that labor, labor saving? <laughs> Plus, you can make a nice mess. Yeah, I definitely take it outside if you can. It's snowing. All right, so now many more of them are ready for the pot. All right, so now we've got our pan heating up again. We've got one whole onion roughly chopped and the, all the garlic close. Get all this in the pan. We're going to cook this for about 10 minutes. Get a little, uh, little flavor going on them. All right, so that's our onions and garlic. Getting a little, little flavor on those. We'll just get them out of this pan. Only reason I'm putting them in a pan is because I already dirtied this pan, so I might as well use it again. And next, by the way, this was a a dry pan, there was no oil in it um, to start with. So next up is a few almonds, about the same amount of peanuts, a cinnamon stick, three peppercorns, and three cloves. So that was about five minutes for those. See them a little, little nicely blackened, blackened bits. Okay, now, just when you thought it couldn't get any darker, here comes the voodoo. Remember our chili seeds? We're gonna cook those in here for probably about 20 minutes until they really totally blacken. This is where it starts getting fun. All right. 
right, so we've got our pile of blackened seeds. And what we're gonna do now is light them on fire. And we just let that burn itself all the way out. Kept putting my fire out, so we moved it in here because this is more like what it should be looking like. Really flaming. So we'll just let that do it for a while in there. So it burns itself out. Alright, so our, our seeds have burned themselves out. We're going to soak these in one cup of water for 10 minutes and then we're going to grind them up in a blender. One cup of water. This is going to soak for 10 minutes before we uh, strain them off and uh, Grind it up. All right, now that we've gotten this far, we can take a break from our frying pan for a minute here and process some of these ingredients. So our seeds have been soaking for their 10 minutes and we're gonna strain them off. And we're gonna put them in a blender. Try and grind these down a little bit. And we'll get a paste out of this. Tricky little things to deal with. All right. Smells like uh, burnt chili seeds. <laughs> Funny. Basically what it is, it's, uh, it's ashes. But I can see it's, uh, it is breaking up in here. Just have to keep <clears throat> our next task is to take our chilies. 
We don't want all the soaking water, but we're gonna have to have some water to get this to blend. I don't know that I've ever tried this in a uh, food processor. Um, I'm not sure that this, I'm not sure whether this um, tool or a food processor is gonna be the best bet for this. We've had trouble but, with leaking though. Yeah. It's too watery. And we have had success using this device. What happened? Hmm. The uh, wiring out here. Margarita setting. I was just thinking, pretty good for this. Outside, and totally appropriate. Sounds like margaritas outside. Yeah, it's a little early. Yeah, not, it's almost noon. Oh, look at the color of that. Yeah, that's just chilly goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't want to forget our green, our chili, please, chili, chili, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Make another margarita here. <laughs> Not a very good color margarita. No. I guess you could have a chocolate margarita. hornet on me <laughs> or some kind of nasty bee. For the last run we're gonna add our seeds. Ah. This is such a a great process making this stuff. It's it's got hints of voodoo Black magic. Mm -hmm. All right. So away we go. One more margarita coming right up. <laughs> in there okay so our next task is to push all this through a strainer and we'll get to that in just a moment so now the lovely task of straining our pepper sauce and really what we're, we really want a nice smooth sauce. We want all the pieces of skin out of here. So that's what this is gonna do for us. I just, I like to get it all. I hate to waste any of this magic juice here. Yeah, it's gonna, oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. You're wasting it on the other side. Yeah. Whoops, sorry, my camera went wonky. <laughs> Is it on slow-mo? No, I just moved it funny. Okay. So, 
through the strainer we go. So now we're back to the uh, hot pan again. I cleaned it out, I wiped it out, and I'm gonna add a little oil. And to this, I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of raisins. And you could use black raisins or yellow raisins, it really doesn't matter. These are what we have, so we're using them. And, uh, and we're gonna cook these. I wanna see them get a little plump. And this part you could actually do indoors. Um, I just, I'm all set up out here, so I'm just keeping going. But uh, there is, we're not putting off any noxious fumes anymore. Oh, yeah, I feel those, those raisins are softening nicely. The other fruit that's going in this sauce is a plantain. They're wonderful things to cook with. They're, um, of course, very similar to bananas, but they're uh, more starch, less sugar. And, uh, oh, look at those raisins. They're just plumping up and uh, they're looking really nice. If you've ever fried bananas, you know how, how wonderful they are. They caramelize. And if you haven't fried bananas, you should try it sometime. So these are very similar in, in how they cook up. Uh, they're obviously not very level out here. So you do want to keep these in the oil. And so we're going to cook these, get them caramelized a little bit. Stray raisin, toss that in there too. And I guess at the same time we're doing that, we're also going to use one piece of bread so we can get that cooking. Just uh, basically here, we're darkening everything. good toasted now we're gonna add just a little bit more oil and we're gonna bring in a half a cup of sesame seeds 
Now I'm using a mix of black and white sesame seeds because I just plain ran out of white ones. That's what we have. So um, you can use either color. It makes no difference. I, I kind of think the black is going to be a nice touch with this. Um, and we want these to darken. The white ones. Uh, the black ones aren't going to darken much. Um, I love the way they jump around. So this this will be about five minutes cooking these up and then we're going to add two pecan halves and cook it for a couple more minutes. jumping all over the place. Toss in our pecan halves. So, you remember our nuts and cinnamon with the cloves and peppercorns. We're going to put these in a spice grinder. Put a little on that. We don't have to chop this all the way up yet, but that cinnamon stick kind of helps to break it up. Our sesame seeds and pecans. This will turn into a nice little paste. Sesame seeds all look ground just fine. Oh, 
All right, so that's much better. All right, so we're finally, we're down to just about the last of our ingredients. Um, we've got a half a pound of tomatoes, a quarter pound of tomatillos. We're gonna use a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. Uh, I've got some thyme. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, a yerba santa leaf. So we're just gonna throw all this, uh, except for the leaf, into our pan. Let's see if I can, I, <gasps> there we go. And we're gonna cook this this is going to cook for 15 20 minutes we're going to try and get some of the mo most of the moisture to leave so we don't want this water even when we're done with it so in we go uh -oh. oh oh there goes your leaf too oh, almost lost that one okay. i did lose my time i'll have to go get more <laughs> so here goes the Mexican oregano, and uh, well, trust me, I'm going to get some time and we'll put it in there, And because uh, when I had blue away, that's the dangers of outdoor cooking. So we'll cook this down, and then we'll toast the yerba santa leaf over the uh, flame a little bit, and uh, we'll be ready for more blender action. So you can see this. So you can see this is really uh, cooking along here. You can see all that moisture though, and that's what we're gonna let boil off. We don't want it to be this juicy. We'll be adding chicken stock for juice later. So just let this boil off. All right. So now we have cooked all of our ingredients to some extent, and uh, we're gonna take our tomatoes and tomatillos and get those blended up into a nice little smooth sauce. And uh, I've also, I've got three cups of chicken broth out here and we may add as much as a half a cup to the tomatoes um, before the day's over, we'll have used it all, however. So let's see what happens here. Nothing. Okay. Why? There we go. Say that doesn't really need any chicken broth. It looks like it's doing just fine. That looks oh. pretty smooth, huh? Oops. Now, we're gonna take some of our onions and garlic. Yeah, I'll put in about a third of it, maybe. Try that. Some of our plantain. Again, I think I'm gonna do this in three shots. Oh, we got raisins down here, too. We wanna get those in there. All these good flavors it's time to bring them all together and some of our bread and our sesame and spice mix and a little bit of our chicken stock Let's put it on 
margarita and see what happens. Bread dues. Is that part of a thickener you think? I think it probably is. Um, you know, the other mole I make calls for a tortilla. Hmm. This one doesn't have a tortilla, but it has bread. to the culprits. This will probably be using up a cup of the chicken stock in this. Maybe a little more. So now it's time to cook all our ingredients up and get them all into the same pot here. So we're going to start with some olive oil. Now actually if we had lard we would be using lard, but we don't. Uh, uh, you, your flavor will be much more authentic if you use lard. You're going to cook with a rainbow on you. Okay. And. To our oil, we are going to add our pepper sauce stuff. And we're going to cook this at a medium heat for about 20 minutes. And you have to really stir frequently because you don't want this to burn on the bottom of the pot. You already burned everything. But uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so no point burning it again. Um, so we'll get as much of this goodness in here as we can. And remember, this is this just tastes like chili. Tastes like a dried chili. It's delicious, and it's kind of bitter. Um, the all the. Uh, 
sugar from the uh, raisins and banana and all that is going to take away the bitterness. But uh, at this point, it's not something you just eat with a spoon. I mean, it's pretty good. All right, so we're just going to cook this for 20 minutes and we'll come back and add our tomatoes. So our chili paste has been cooking away here for about 20 minutes. As you can see from the lid, this is quite the splooty thing. It splashes its lava bombs far and wide, so the lid is very necessary. I turned it down just a little while ago so that I could take the lid off for this next part and you could get a look inside because that is pretty. Look at that stuff. It's reduced a, quite a bit. It's a little bit drier. So now we're going to add our tomato and tomatillo. And this has the uh, thyme and oregano in it. And we're going to let this cook for about 10 minutes and uh, get incorporated in here and lose a little bit more moisture. And there you go. So uh, we'll see what this is like after about 10 minutes and uh, we'll add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so we've had our 10 minutes with our tomatoes in there. And uh, now it's time to add our the rest of our blended uh, ingredients. This is all our nuts and fruits and mm, the plantain and the sesame seeds, the peanuts. Okay. And yes, there are a lot of dishes involved in this. You, making of this. Part of the idea is to use every bowl in the house. But. <laughs> so good at that. So we're going to let these cook together for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to add some chicken stock to it. This looks like it's going to be good and splooty. Okay, so we'll just let that uh, sploot, sploot away for a while, for 10 minutes, and we'll come back and see what we got. All right, so we've given this all time to marry in the pot here. We're going to add about a cup of chicken stock. And we're going to and, and some salt. I think I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt in at this point. a little more and now this just needs to cook on low for about 20 minutes and then we will add the magic ingredient chocolate a mole comes from the Aztec word for sauce when I think of mole, usually I think of sauces with chocolate in them, but uh, a couple weeks ago I made a green mole that had no chocolate whatsoever. Um, and there are many different kinds of mole and only some of them have chocolate. But this one is definitely going to have chocolate. So we'll come back in about 20 minutes and we'll add the last of our ingredients and let it cook some more. Alright, so this has been... Uh, 
cooking along for 20 minutes. We've got our Yerba Santa leaf here, and we're gonna just uh, brown it a little bit in the uh, in a dry skillet on medium heat. You can also just hold it over flame. Um, this is not the freshest leaf, and Kelly was afraid it might just burst into flames. So um, <laughs> somebody has to be cautious. We'll do it this here. way. So now we are going to add five ounces of chocolate. This is 100% cacao. There's no sweetener. It's just the real deal. And uh, mm -mm -mm. yeah, it's, it's this stuff. You can also use Mexican chocolate. Um, but uh, so, and then we'll stir until that melts in. And we're just gonna throw this leaf in there whole and eventually, you know, we'll try not to get it on anyone's plate when we serve up. Probably be able to notice that one. I think so. Um, the, the flavor of the Yerba Santa is uh, described uh, often as being like uh, root beer. And if you can't, they're not easy to come by you, around here. Um, so if you if you don't have a Yerba Santa leaf, I wouldn't worry about it. But uh, we're gonna add that in there. Turn that off. We're gonna add the rest of our chicken stock. And this is just gonna cook now for probably about an hour. Let everything completely marry and um, it'll, uh, it's looking great. It's gonna be a really good mole. We'll taste it after a little while and see if maybe it needs a little more salt. And, uh, but other than that, it's done. So this has been cooking for an hour now and it, it does tend to thicken a little when it's cooking and it was getting pretty thick. So I added another cup of chicken broth. And now this looks like it's at the perfect consistency and I'm gonna call it done. So we're gonna wait until uh, dinner time and show you uh, a wonderful use for this mole. But for now, uh, we're calling it done. <laughs> So here's our mole on the plate. It became part of a uh, chili riano dinner. Um, we have the mole, we have some Mexican rice, some pico de gallo salsa, a few tomatoes as a garnish, and a little bit of sour cream. And there we have... <laughs> it <looks like laughs> it's the day of the dead riano. I made mine prettier than that, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Tell us how delicious your food is. <laughs> mm. What's it taste like? Mm. Happy? No, that's really good. Um, this sauce has a, um, a real depth of flavor. It's a, lots of flavors coming through on that. It, it just goes with the, the cheese and the chili so well. This is a, it's a great dinner. Cheers. All right, so another very traditional use for mole is we have here some chicken thighs. I removed the skin because you know, we don't really need the extra fat. Um, and we happen to have a pineapple here that was ripe and uh, really delicious. So this is, the fruit is gonna go really well with the mole. So we got chicken and pineapple in here, and that's all. And I'm just gonna smother this with mole. And then this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about an hour. And it's just gonna be tremendous. <clears throat> And we'll even have a little extra mole to put on top if we need it. I think that's gonna be a lot. This is, yeah, this is looking pretty good. 
So there you have it. Chicken mole. All right, so here we are. We've got the chicken. Let's put the star over there towards the camera. We got the chicken, we got some Mexican rice, we got a little bit of salsa, and we made a, a tomato and a pineapple, just a little tomato pineapple salad. So it's gonna be great. So here we have uh, a pretty traditional use for mole to go with chicken. And uh, this mole, hmm. Oh, yeah. So, after all that effort, this mole is just so complex and it's so layered with flavors. Um, you get a little bit of um, bitterness at first, but then you get the fruit that comes through and um, it just keeps going. It keeps going. It tastes, and you get a little bit of chili and. Um, wow. Yeah, it's great. You just have to try it yourself and see. Um, and I am pairing this chicken dish with a lovely Septentrio Vignet. Um, nothing like a good, when you get a local wine that's really good, that's what you want. So thank you for watching Two Cooks in the Kitchen and we will see you next time.